Good morning, church. Great to be here. It's been a while, so let's hope I know what I'm doing. Um, these last few weeks, we've been looking at how we're to come to the end of ourselves, how we're to fully surrender and um, so that the Lord can use us and so that he uh, can use us how he intended um, for us and for um, and with us. Gosh, I've just lost myself. Not just for us and our families, but also for our church, uh, the body of Christ, and for, of course for those that are unsaved. This morning, I will be talking about our plans, dreams, and purposes, and what we imagine for our futures. We have been looking at surrendering different things to the Lord that allow us to be more effectively used by God. I'll be looking at how important it is for us to come to the Lord and surrender our plans, dreams, and visions to him, and to ask him what he has planned for us. I want us to think about this question. Does God put dreams in our hearts? And if he does, what are they there for? Often, when we talk about the plans and dreams we have for our lives, we have imagined our future from when we were very young. We have ideas about our jobs, our partners, our children, even what our home looks like, even what car we'll drive and so on. We have a fantasy about all these things and we hope that everything is going to fall into place just as, as we imagined it to. I read this a few weeks ago. Fantasy can be idolatry. This happens when we put our trust in an image carved out by our minds. It's crazy to believe that we are gonna, all these things are going to happen for us when there's so many unpredictable things that we will encounter through our lives. Things that could change our lives in an instant. Just think how unrealistic it is for us to... Uh, go through all these obstacles, but yet still get exactly what we want. There's so many variables, so why on earth do we think it's possible? We can decide, oh, I want to do this as a career, and then we go to school and college and we, we study to do the things that we've planned for ourselves. Um, we could argue that we took a dream and we made it happen. When we think our dreams have become... Um, when we think like this, our dreams can become like an idol. And we think that we are in complete control. As we become more successful with each goal, we can feel like um, we've got it covered. We're actually secure in who we are and what we're doing to bring our future to fruition. We, in our own strength, are making these dreams happen. And although we believe in Jesus... We don't always go to him and ask him, are these the plans you had for us? What happens if things don't work out as we thought they would? We couldn't achieve, achieve a grade that we needed. We didn't get the job that we thought we were perfect for. We had an accident and couldn't physically do what we've been spending our whole lives walking, working towards. When our dreams and plans don't go according to the plan we're faced with a decision. What now? Do I ask God to reveal why my plan didn't go according to the plan I had? Do I walk away from God feeling disappointed because he hasn't blessed my plan? Is my hope in my dream or is it in the dream giver, God? We can't change our circumstances as much as we would like to think we can. But we can decide how we are going to handle or respond to our circumstances. When my marriage fell apart, I, of course, was devastated. I was upset about all that I had planned and imagined would be my future. My ideas for my family were now broken and in disarray. I was upset and in shock. It hadn't gone my way. I didn't have a plan B for my marriage and my family. 
it was supposed to have a different ending. And just like many of you, your families aren't behaving as you imagined they would. Um, your marriages aren't exactly how you fantasized about them when you were younger. And often there is a time of adjustment where we navigate the disparity between what we thought was going to happen and what the reality of living together is like. Your career path might not be the dream job you had imagined. When this happened to me, I had to make a decision. I couldn't change my circumstances. I could only change the way I lived from then on. I had to decide, do I walk away from God because I felt he let me down and didn't answer my prayers to stop this from happening? And to be honest, I did go there a couple of times. Um, or did I surrender all that I thought my future would be to the Lord, who is the only one that actually knows what he has in store for me and my future and my family. I had lost what I thought the plan for my life was with God. I had to come, I had to, come to a place of fully surrendering and asking the Lord to show me what his plans were. What were his purposes for me, my future, and my family? I have to say, this didn't just happen overnight. I didn't just go, oh, bummer, didn't work out. Hey, God, show me your next plan. No, I had to grieve. I took time to grieve. There was wrestling. There was debating, arguing, sulking, and wallowing. And I'll just admit, that was me, not God, obviously, just in case you were wondering. I realized if I wanted the Lord to continue to be part of my life, I had to surrender the dreams and the fantasies and the plans I had for my future and my family. I had to submit all the preconceived ideas I had about um, everything that I knew. Um, I had to decide everything I read about the Lord or knew about the Lord was true and that I would have to trust him. And I would have to trust that he would bring fullness and, and uh, hope out of my brokenness. He promises in Romans 8, 20 or 8, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purposes, purpose. I was one of those that he loved, that loved him, I should say. So I was going to trust he was going to work all things out for me and my good. It says all things. That's all of the good, all of the bad, all of the disappointments, all of my failures. And somehow he's going to, make it all together and bring it out as good for me and, and for his glory. One of the questions I asked at the beginning is, does God put dreams in our hearts? And if he does, what are they there for? In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So we've read, the Lord does have plans for us. But if we continue to the next verse, it says, then you will call on me and come and pray. God does have plans for us, but he wants us to include him in them. The plans the Lord has for us are for us to join with him. He wants us to journey with him, to be asking him what he wants to do with us, through us and for us daily. We must be confident the Lord does have plans for us and that his intention is that we finish them. Do we believe this? We serve a God who knows our future. He knows what he has in store for us. He promises his plans and his purposes um, for us, he will fulfill. And he's given us the ability and the gifts and the people 
to help us achieve what he has for us. If we have a surrendered life to the Lord, he is able to lead us and guide us into all he has for us, especially when it gets hard. We do imagine or think about our partners, our children, our careers, and it's okay to have plans and dreams about all of these things. But we need to give them to God. We need to ask, what does he think about them? Jeremiah does tell us he has plans and dreams in our hearts. He puts them there. But we need to ask him about the timing, the logistics, and then surrender all we thought we would, how we would get there and trust him and wait on him, the hard part. When things don't go according to our plan, like an unexpected death, an illness, a divorce, a loss of a job, how do we respond? Are we angry at God? Are we angry at ourselves for failing to accomplish what we set out to achieve? Are we angry at those people that let us down? And yes, I've done all three. Do we get bitter that it didn't go our way? Or do we cry out to God and call for help, call for guidance, asking him, where are you, Lord, and show me how do I get back on this dream and plan that I thought I was on with you? Trusting God is scary, it's hard, because he rarely gives us the whole picture. In fact, I'd say he never gives the whole picture. He only promises to light our path, not the whole road. When we are fully surrendered to the Lord, it is much easier for God to speak to us, to to steer us, and to show us all his plans for us and our future. He does this because he wants us to continually call on him, to rely on him. He wants a relationship and a partnership with us. He wants us to discover the gifts he has given us and how we can use them for the journey that he, uh, toward our f- the fulfillment of each dream, vision and plan he has for us. He wants intimacy with us. He wants to share in our excitement when we find a friend that happens to be the perfect person that's going to bring out the plan to, to fruition. He wants to experience the joy with us of us seeing our dreams come true. God's journey might not be the journey we thought we were going to go on, but it will be more fulfilling and more challenging than we could ever imagine. It's going to be an adventure, but we're actually built for adventure with God. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work with us. To him the sorry, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Paul lets us know the Lord has far more of an adventure than we could dream or imagine. As we follow his purposes, we will see how God is using us in mightier ways than we could ever think. The plans and dreams the Lord has for us far outweigh anything we could dream of or think of. It's beyond our imagination. It's beyond our capability without him. It can be hard to be patient and wait when we are convinced God has a plan for us and it doesn't seem to be going our way. My suggestion is you stand firm. God may be waiting for all the pieces to come together. He may be working on our patience. Whatever he is doing, trust God will bring his plans to fruition. Philippians 1.6 says, Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it out to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Sometimes God's dreams require sacrifice. God wants to build our character and our endurance because he wants us to be strong until the very end. 
Don't give up on the dream, especially when it gets tough. As we remain steadfast, but pliable, the Lord will continue to grow us in all areas of our lives, in all areas of our character, in all areas of our patience, waiting and, uh, to fulfill the dreams. James 1, 2, 4 is a, is a um, scripture that lot, lots of people use all the time and it, it kind of, we kind of go, oh no, not that scripture, we don't want pain. But it's, it's for a purpose. It says, one, uh, two to four, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. As Christ followers, it doesn't mean we're going to avoid drama, trauma, pain, loss, suffering. Um, I think it's funny that we think like this, that uh, there's actually a new prayer app out, which I actually agree with, I think it's a great idea, but it's on the radio station and you can put your prayer request and then it goes out and if you're on, if you're on that app, that prayer comes up and you can pray for it and then you say, I pray for it and the person receives hundreds of people praying for them. But in the advert for it, it says, oh Lord, I lost my job, please help me get a new one. Oh Lord, uh, my child's going to college, please protect her. But when we go through these trials and events, it's how we deal with them that makes the difference. As most of you know, I have applied for a green card quite a few years ago. And I'm also trying to get a driver's license and one relates to the other. And every time I think, yes, I've got the paperwork, I've got the yes, I've got the little piece that says the card will be coming. A few weeks later in the mail, it says, denied. You need more paperwork. You need more um, red tape to go through. The reason I'm going through this is because of the divorce. It's like pain and disappointment over and over again. I start to feel overwhelmed and powerless, which leads to anger and frustration. And then I end up just wanting to give up I want to just throw the computer, rip the paperwork and leave. It feels like it won't end. It feels undeserved. The only thing I can do is ask him to show me why. Ask him what he is building in me. How will he use all of this for my good and for his glory? And as I said before, it doesn't happen straight away. It's, but I know I can only turn to him. And that's what I feel about that prayer app. It kind of says, oh, pray for my daughter. And then it says, praying for your daughter. What if we did this? Lord, I've lost my job. Show me how you'll use this situation. Show me what you're building in me. Before we run to, quick, get me a job, get me a job. Let's just, let's just ask God, what is this for Paul? Last week... Um, Pastor Mark talked about being uncomfortable. Being uncomfortable is often a factor uh, when we are working towards our dreams. Do we lose some of the advantages that God gives us because we don't step out of our comfort zone? We need to be listening to his voice. If we trust him, we will not only be listening, but we will be obeying too. Is God good? Do we believe he has a plan for us? Do we believe his plans are for our good and his glory? Are we willing to follow and obey, even when it disrupts our own plan? Are we willing to let go of some of our ideas, plans, friends and comfort to pursue what the Lord has in store for us? We say we trust God. But do we trust him when life seems to be falling apart? What about when the opposite happens to what we prayed for? His plans are higher than our plans. They are more powerful than ours could ever be. They are more strategic than we could ever think of and more rewarding in areas of all of our lives. Once we understand that, 
we would never want to go back to our small-minded, comfortable life again. He says he will restore what the lo locusts have stolen. Following him will bring healing, restoration, and his saving grace. We can live in an abundance of his kingdom. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your hearts, and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. It is hard to stay faithful and hopeful in the waiting, and when things seem to be going from bad to worse. Remember who gave you those dreams, who gave you the plans and the purposes. He is a faithful God. We need to make sure our hope is in him. I read this last week. Um, there is freedom on the other end of your faithfulness, both for you personally and for all the people we will be impact sorry. Both for you personally and for all the people we will be impacted by um, you fully living on your out of your purpose. That didn't come out as I think I've misread it. Does God put dreams in our hearts? And if he does, what are they there for? Ephesians 2.10 For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus, to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. These plans and dreams and visions were actually before our mother even thought about us. God took an idea, took a plan, took a vision, and, and, and then he wrapped that around you, and then he sent you down to earth. I read this yesterday and I thought it's, it's definitely for what we're doing. You are intentionally and uniquely designed by God. You were put on this planet on purpose at this specific time in history. You have been empowered to shine and share his love in a distinct and special way that's completely unique to you. Trust he has a plan for you. And trust he knows how to get it to fruition. Give your plans to him and ask him to show you what he wants to do with them. Ask him to show you what your gifts are. How he can use you for his glory and the good of all of those around you. We have spoken about coming to the end of ourselves. And not just for us, it is for the body of Christ and the people that don't know the Lord. The plans and purposes the Lord has given us are for the good of others. He wants to use us for a bigger purpose than we understand. We are a small part of God's plan for humanity. Surrendering our plans and allowing the Lord to lead us in his plan for us is where we will find fulfillment because we will be walking out in the fullness of who he created us to be. As we trust him and follow his leading, he will be able to use us more as we grow in all he has called us to be. He not only has designed us and a plan that he's going to bring to fulfillment, he also knows who are you going to speak to, who are you going to work with, who are you going to be at school with, who are your children going to be, your husband, your wife. He knows the people that you're going to be uh, involved with. God does care about your dreams. He puts them into your heart and mind. He is waiting for us to long for those dreams. He is building our faith while we wait and seek him. He is waiting for us to ask him, what and how does this plan bring our dreams to fulfillment? He wants to, us to ask for details. He loves to hear our expectations and our hopes and our questions about these dreams and visions. He wants conversations with us, not just a list of requests. He would like to hear you ask, how will you use me to accomplish this? Who, have you gonna, who are you going to put in my life to get this to, to, be, to happen? Does my plan line up with yours, Lord? Psalm 37, 4. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord 
and he will give you the desires of your heart. We have been talking about Explore God and on your seat is a little promo card about it. The question, the first question that we're going to do on week one is, does life have a purpose? I want to encourage you to join us as we go through this series. A lot of churches in the area are going through the same, going through it at the same time. Bring a friend to the small group that we're going to have on a Wednesday um, as we discuss these seven quest- questions. So what are our next steps? Come to the little group. Invite friends that don't know the Lord that might have questions about God. Come and ask, what are your plans for us? Ask your friends, do you know that you have a plan on your life? Would you like to come and find out what God thinks about those? God knows how to restore purpose. God sees the bigger picture. God's ideas are much better than ours are for us. Are we ready to give our hopes, plans and dreams to God for him to use us in a mightier way than we've ever been used before? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you that you do uh, put plans, dreams and desires in our hearts. And you promise that you will use us to bring those uh, plans and dreams to fruition. Help us, Lord, to surrender our our decisions, our thoughts, our uh, plans to you, Lord, and just say, are these from you? Help us to be led by you, open our ears to hear you, and help us to be quick to obey you. Help us, Lord, to ask for your purpose in everything that we go through. I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.